Reese thought it was Wednesday. It's Tuesday. Just so you know, that's a fact that you needed to hear. And you also need to hear this existential question, which is, do you just spend your whole life gathering guests for your funeral? <laughs> Reese just contemplated his own mortality and found it hilarious. I agree. His existence is a joke. Let's go ahead and move on. I love you and I don't mean it. Let's go ahead and talk about hot news today as you contemplate your own mortality. And that is, it's real. It's real. The chip I've wanted from AMD for the longest time is real. We have benchmarks. It's there. It exists. And this is the Ryzen 7 4700G. Eight cores, 16 threads with an iGPU, a Vega iGPU. I love it. I love it so much. APU time. It's APU time. So there was an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark as well as a user benchmark submission. It looks like it has between a three gigahertz base clock and a four gigahertz boost clock. Obviously, leaked benchmarks at this time doesn't necessarily indicate the final shipping spec, but it's it's there. It exists. I want it. I so want it. I don't know how powerful the GPU is going to be, but if it's good enough to play like esports titles, then this might be going in my like little small form factor PC that I'm planning for doing hot news. We talked about in the video on Saturday how I use a 10980XE to web browse, and I don't need that. But do I need a 4700G? Probably not. I could get by with a 2200G, but am I gonna? Nah, but the 4700G is real. I've been waiting for this. I'm so excited. An eight core APU from AMD, it exists. It is only running Vega graphics at this point, the seven nanometer upgraded version, which is 15% faster than the previous generation. So that is good news. I'm actually more or less excited for the next generation where it's gonna have Navi. That'll be phenomenal. I'm, I'm really hyped for that, but I'll take the 4700G in the meanwhile. AMD, hit me up, your boy wants one. But. I also want this mysterious Ryzen 7 Extreme Edition. This is a benchmark that's been showing up. It looks like it's actually a mobile processor, which I'm less excited about it now. But if it was a you know desktop chip, then I'd be super excited, but it's not. It's a mobile processor with a 4.3 gigahertz boost, which is good and all. Yeah, I don't need a super duper powerful laptop. That's not for your boy, but you get, get excited regardless. I know my energy is absolutely translating all of this to you. Be super hyped. Also be super hyped that Ryzen can overclock really well, or it can if you have liquid nitrogen, because somebody was able to get the Ryzen 3 3100 up to a clock speed of six gigahertz. Yes, using liquid nitrogen, which actually isn't that fast. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fast. Obviously, you need liquid nitrogen for it, but like Intel is just so much better. You can get them up to seven. You can get them up to seven gigahertz. So like, I mean, and honestly, Derbauer just did a video where he got the FX8350 up to eight gigahertz. So Ryzen, clearly a much, much worse processor. That's how it works. And also, do you know how RAM works? Probably not. Do you know how to get the best timings for your RAM on Ryzen. Probably not as well, which is where the DRAM calculator comes in and it has been updated to support new features and has a whole bunch of reworked stuff to make sure that you get your best memory timings on Ryzen. In case you want, we'll leave a link in the video description for you to check that out. But that's not the last little bit of AMD news we have. No sir, Bob. We've got news about GPU stuff because we talked about last week how AMD was gonna have announcements every day for GPU open. We were gonna get new Fidelity FX stuff, and we did. We got our first little bit of releases yesterday. We should expect another one to drop today. Anyways, we've got things like stochastic screen space reflections, combined adaptive compute ambient occlusion, luminance preserving mapper, and a single pass down sampler. All of that coming to Fidelity FX so that they can take over NVIDIA Gameworks. Down with NVIDIA's proprietary garbage that runs poorly on everything. Up with AMD's proprietary garbage that's also gonna run poorly because they don't know how to code things and they're bad at software. Is that the joke? That's Yay the meme. For everyone. That the meme is AMD's bad at drivers, so therefore they're bad at software. That's whether or not that's true, I'm making a, a hilarity. Please laugh. Which is what I'm doing towards Intel. I'm laughing at Intel. I'm laughing all the way to the bank because I'm not gonna buy one of them because they're stupid expensive. Anyways, somebody got their hands on an i9 10900K. We did, we showed it off on stream. We don't have a motherboard. I can't talk about benchmarks. So I'm under an NDA about performance, even though I can't test performance because I don't have a motherboard to test performance. So this is a weird one. I'm just gonna read directly from the article, which is the 10900K gets 235 watts and reaches 93 degrees Celsius on a 240 mil AIO. That's a lot. 4.8 gigahertz was the clock speed to hit 235 watts from the wall. 
4.8 gigahertz. Thermal velocity boost, in case you're not familiar, allows the chip to go up to 5.3, which you're not getting, unless you honestly have a space station doing liquid cooling from space. That's how, that's how you cool this thing. But while I'm not gonna be spending money on Intel, and I have given Logitech a little bit of my money. I have, now that I'm real, I bought a couple mice from them. Anyways, well, apparently I was, I was a part of their year on year increase in profit. They're coming out with their financial report for the end of the fiscal year 2020, and they have delivered five consecutive years at or near double digit growth. I was part of that. You're welcome, Logitech. Logitech continuing to do strong. They're adjusting their outlook for 2021, obviously because of Voldemort, but Logitech still going strong. And Ubisoft going strong, regardless of the cancellation of E3. They've announced that July 12th is going to be their forward event. I don't know what that means. Ubisoft, please don't break my heart. My heart's already broken though, because- Give us gameplay. Give us gameplay. I would love gameplay, but Things are going to play out poorly on your Xbox Series X. Yes, let's go ahead and talk about that. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is going to be the latest entry into the Assassin's Creed franchise. Well, it's been confirmed that on the Series X, a 12 teraflop GPU, right? Like the, one of the best performing computers that you could possibly have on the market right now. Limited 30 FPS. No! Right? How bad is that? It hurts. It hurts. They've confirmed that it will run at 4K 30 on the Series X. This is garbage. It is garbage, which is also coincidentally what you can run Doom on. Doom will run on even garbage. Somebody hardwired the code to Doom into an FPGA. What? Somebody made a computer that can only play Doom. And it will play Doom forever. That's all you can do on it. Coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, it took 666 lines of code. I feel like my segues are off today. I also feel like Shadow was taken off of iTunes, because it was. Shadow, in case you're not familiar, is kind of like a GeForce now, where you can like stream games on a remote desktop. That's the general idea. It was removed from the App Store for violating Apple's guidelines. Well now, after two months of being away, it is back. It removed the quick launch feature and now abides by Apple's guidelines. So in case you were using Shadow and you couldn't get the app, well now you can. And you can get over-the-air updates for your Ford Mustang Mach-E. Copycats, okay? Tesla invented this. Tesla invented the over-the-air update. Ford is coming out and saying that with the Mach-E, they're gonna have OTA updates for the car, which, I mean, Tesla didn't invent OTA updates, but I can't tell you how much easier it is just to get an update for your car over the internet instead of having to take it to the gosh dang dealership and then being like, okay, this is gonna take six days. We're gonna have to input a bunch of different codes and then we're gonna do an OTA update as well, but we can only do it at our dealership. Tesla, so much more convenient. You just leave it connected to the Wi-Fi and then it does it. But no, no, my stupid Toyota, you gotta take it freaking into the, oh, you want a firmware update? Ha, I pay $600 for that. Obviously OTA updates are a little scary because you could obviously have the possibility, especially with something that has autopilot where it's just like i'm gonna kill all humans now so that but hopefully you know they're verifying all of the updates that they send out and it's not gonna it's not gonna kill all of us but you know what's gonna kill my wallet the airpod studios i know i know i know i probably shouldn't be admitting it here on hot news because we have so many pc master race people in the audience but i'm heavily considering these to replace my Sony WH-1000MX2s, okay? $350 appears to be the incoming price of the AirPod Studios. It's going to have head and neck detection so that when you take them off, they automatically pause the music, kind of like when you take an AirPod out. It'll have a custom equalizer setting. It'll also have left and right ear detection so that I can properly give you the correct stereo no matter how you put on the headset. It's also apparently still going to have active noise cancellation, kind of like the AirPod Pros. The real thing that I need to know that's gonna make my final decision is battery life. If it can match what my Sony's can do, I'm switching. I'm switching for these features. Cause that price isn't terrible for active noise cancellation, okay, like wireless headphones. That's a good price. 350 is not terrible. You try to get the Mark III's of the Sony's and they're that expensive. The Bose QC35's, they're that expensive. So, I mean, AirPod Studios, I'm this close to loving you. You better have a 40 hour battery life and Speaking of listening to music on my things, my ear things, right? Well, now Spotify is apparently coming out with Spotify group sessions where I can control your music. Only if we, we all have premium and then we can share it together and then everybody gets to control the music that we're leading to. 
listening to. It's kind of weird, it's kind of weird. So you can share your music listening session to other people in your space via, via code, and once everyone has joined, you all have joint control over what's playing, including the ability to cue songs. So you can all set like a, a playlist. This would be great for parties. Where like if if you just want to have something going on, or it'd be great for like car trips, as long as you guys actually agree on the generic types of music and like the drivers driving, and you're like, I hate this, but it's on my Spotify, and you can be like, I got you, bro, and then you switch it on yours. That's what I'm coming up with. Okay, all right, all right, we need a we need to take a a moment to reset. In case you don't like my ranting segments, I suggest being done now. Uh, so goodbye to everybody who doesn't like a good Brett rant because it's coming in fast and furious, okay? You ready for the onslaught of words coming out of my mouth of uh, who, who would you think is the topic of today's rant? All right, that's Quibi. It's Quibi. It's freaking Quibi. Oh my gosh, it's Quibi. Because, oh, guys, Jeffrey Katzenberger, the dude behind Quibi, who at one point was the head of Walt Disney Studios and re was responsible for a lot of terrible decisions there, has given an interview to the New York Times regarding why Quibi isn't performing well. You want to hear the quote? You want to hear why his stupid service that nobody needed or nobody would ever want, regardless of what's going on in the world, is failing? <clears throat> I attribute everything that has gone wrong to coronavirus, he said. Everything. What? But then he continues to end that, to end that, all right? This is, honestly, this is like, I don't take responsibility at all. That's, that's basically what I'm getting. But then he concludes that statement with, but we own it. Bull crap. Bull freaking crap. You're sitting in your ivory tower not making any losses from this. You don't even care. You released something that nobody ever wanted. Quibi was a dumb platform from the get-go. If there wasn't the pandemic going on right now, you would still have terrible downloads because number one, who cares about your turnstile feature? Mobile users do not. We've gotten used to portrait viewing. We've gotten used to rotating our phones if we want landscape viewing. Nobody in the world needs both. Okay, and then 10 minute content? Who wants 10 minute content? Obviously it's good for quick bites, but why? Why do I need quick bites? I can get that on YouTube where I can curate it to something I wanna see instead of the bull crap Hollywood nonsense you're peddling out to me. Breathe. Breathe. No! Mr. Katzenberger expressed disappointment with the numbers that they have saying, is it the avalanche of people that we wanted and were going for out of launch? No, the answer is no, it's not up to what we wanted. It's not close to what we wanted. Did you take a second to live in the real world to understand that you are never gonna get good numbers? I'm not some mystical fortune teller. I'm just a dude living life. And I can tell you, your app is shoot. <laughs> it's a family friendly show. <laughs> His entire interview just pisses me off. He also said, there are a whole bunch of things we have seen now in the product that we thought we got mostly right, but now there are hundreds of people using it. You go, uh-oh, we didn't see that. You didn't read the freaking room, Katzenberger. The room said, don't launch this. You know what you would have been better off doing with the $475 million you had allocated to marketing? Nothing. You would have literally had a better return using it as toilet paper because you probably can't go through money that fast if you're pooping, unless you got diarrhea for the rest of your life, which, I mean, as long as it's not fatal, maybe I wish that on you. Maybe, probably not. The end of the interview ticks me off the most, you ready? So when, when comparing the fact that Quibi sucks nuts and Netflix is doing phenomenally, his response was, Oh, his arrogant ivory tower bullcrap response was, that's like comparing apples to submarines. I don't know what people are expecting from us. What did Netflix look like 30 days out of it after it launched? To tell me about a company that has billion users and is doing great in the past six weeks? I'm happy for them. But what the hell does it have to do with me? What it has to do with you, Mr. Katzenberger, is Netflix met a need for people who actually had a content consumption desire. Netflix sent you DVDs so you didn't have to go to the store. That makes sense. It fills, it, it gives me convenience. It allows for me to check something off my box of like things that I have to do in the week. Oh, I wanna consume videos on the weekend? Well, I have to go to Blockbuster. Well, guess what? Now I don't because I got Netflix. What does Quibi do? that doesn't already exist. Nothing. That's what it has to do with you. We're not comparing apples to submarines. We're comparing an apple tree to a defunct apple seed that should have never been planted because it was impregnated by a lemon. It's garbage.
Sneaky lemons. Quibi, you suck. You're going to die. Mr. Katzenberger, listen, I, I am talking to you directly now. Number one, please don't sue me because all of this is alleged. Number two, <laughs> <laughs> number two, if you are in the real world and you realized how people actually use their phones, you should have realized that you're not meeting a need. Nobody needs this. You're not promoting any more convenience. You're not promoting any time save. You're not promoting anything that creates novelty in a user experience on the phone. If we want portrait content, we can get portrait content. If we want landscape content, we can get landscape content. If we want high quality 10 minute videos, you're watching this on YouTube. You can get 10 minute videos that are phenomenal. Sure, not Hollywood produced, but I, th I think maybe you're not realizing that Hollywood produced is good when you spend hundreds of millions of dollars on it. It's not good in these small form factors. 10 minutes, I'd rather connect with a real person than connect with Chrissy freaking Teigen, okay? I don't even know who she is. But all I see is the ads for Chrissy Court. It's, I don't, I don't, why would I wanna see that? Why would I wanna see that when I could watch Gus Johnson scream Tyler, Tyler no, for a good five minutes? I don't, I don't have a good answer for you. Tyler, no, come in here, Tyler, it's, it's storming. Tyler, no, it's, over. There's light and don't lay down, Tyler. You're susceptible to damage. But Mr. Katzenberger, real people knew Quibi sucked. Why don't you stick your Quibi where the sun don't shine, which is in your socks, just so we're clear. I'm saying a lot of things that could probably get me in trouble. I'm going to be done with this episode. Don't forget about the existential question of the day, which is, do you spend your whole life gathering guests for your funeral? I can tell you Meg Whitman, Jeffrey Katzenberger are not going to be at my funeral. But don't you worry. I'll remember them when I'm dead. That's it. See ya.